Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello everybody and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Bird, Nick, and with me today is your girl Pinky. Coming to you from her ice tent. Because she has a bigger one than I do. The she shed, Nicholas. Yeah. Well, I'm, it, it is an ice tent. You True. just I call mine the ice tent of love. You call yours the she shed. She but, shed. You know, but yours is significantly larger than mine. That's what she said. You bought the uh, <laughs> you bought the three person. I bought the two person. And you wouldn't think it would be that much of a general difference, but it's significant. It, it really is. It is significant. I can stand up fully. It, I just hit my hand on the lights. She's got like string lights. It's so much more fanciful in here. Anyway, I can stand up fully in yours, whereas mine I have to hunch slightly. And uh, you have doors on both sides. Yeah. And it's just, it's so much more spacious. It is. So much more spacious. And we've got the digital fireplace. We do have a fireplace going. I mean, it's, and this it, is, it's fancy. I. I will admit, this would not be here right now if not for you. Oh, yeah. I berated you into doing this today. I was cursing you the entire time. I was so mad. It was cold and windy out. It is freezing. And you know. But you couldn't put it up prior for reasons. Yeah. I mean, we hosted Thanksgiving and I didn't want. You didn't want, want to explain why there's a giant tent in our backyard. Tent yeah. In the backyard. Yeah. And so, so. It's going up a little. It went up a little later this year, but. So I texted you today about some work projects I'm working on. Uh-huh. Asked for your feedback on that. And then I was like, hey, I think I'm going to do this today, but it is really cold. And you jumped on it. You were like, basically, like, shut up and get it up. I was like, do it, because then we need to record a pulpit tonight. <laughs> and you're like, oh. And that really moved up my timeline on a all, lot the, of all stuff. the stuff I was working on. Yes. But I'm thankful to you. I appreciate because... The tent's up, the she shed's up, I say, I gave and my work projects are done. Square kick in the ass. So. So that's good. And I do love it in here. Like, I, I love it in here. And I brought cigars. Well, I told you, if you wanted to record tonight, you had to bring me something. Good. I did. I have nothing. I, I'm looking forward to smoking nothing that's in my current humidor. Don't you hate that? Yes. I, well, I've, ne- I've never, this is the first time in three years that I've ever felt that way. Is it that you just... Is... I don't have any of my usuals. Okay. So it's all just stuff that, like... It's all... Has either New... been given or yes. whatever. And yes. you're just like, ah, I just don't know. Yes. And... Yeah. Okay. And All so, right. you know. So it, your new favorite could be sitting there waiting for you to discover it. Correct. But you don't know because you're being like, ugh, about That's it right true. Now. That's okay. true. But I have also found <laughs> that, you know, I'm, I do better smoking new stuff when it's gifted to me. Okay. But then I'm in this phase right now, the season where I'm like, I really want the two or three things I usually go to. Okay. And I don't have any of those. Okay. I need to head over to Dan's place. You do. I you, need a you, well, I need a restock. All right. Something bad. So, so all right, what are we smoking today? We are smoking something that was gifted to me by uh listener Seth. <gasps> this yay. This is another another yes, cigar thanks, from Seth. listener Seth. Uh we have the timeless limited edition um black and uh this is from our friends over at Ferriotego. As I'm about to choke. Um, and uh, it is a six and a half by 48 featuring a um, Dominican wrapper. And the inside is made up of Dominican and Nicaraguan tobacco. Uh, this is the TGS 2023. This was a limited edition cigar for uh, the Great Smoke 2023. And uh, well, we have two of them. So, um, yes. Just like the last one Seth sent us, this smells wonderful. There you go. Well, it's time to cut the cigar, and the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company, where Pinky needs to go. Hey, Dan. So, yeah, this is a good time to go and stock up your humidor. Get that going, because you know what? It's Christmas time. and Treat yourself. Getting... Exactly. Treat yourself. It's like, you know, if you don't have somebody who's going to get you the cigar-related gifts in your life, go and treat yourself yourself. Hey, not everybody has a Javier. That's true. I mean, well, that's right. He got you the cutter last year, didn't and he? Last, and uh, two years ago was the cutter, but last year oh, he did sorry. the 12 days of Christmas that's for me. Right. And I got a cigar a day for 12 days. That's right. That was awesome. See? 
See? And so now, if he's not going to do that again this year, which I don't know if he is or not. Um, he is not. Oh, well. We've talked about it. Okay. Well, then you're going to have to worry about Help stocking myself. up yourself. <laughs> so make sure you head on over to Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company. Check out what he's got in the humidor. And if you're not in the St. Louis area, but you still want to support a brick and mortar, you can give Dan a call. You can talk to either him or Miss Cindy or Little John. Get a nice shipment mailed to you because he does do mail order. So that's Dan the Man Ponder, Riverman Cigar Company in Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, it's now time to go ahead and cut the cigar. All right. So I've had my son this weekend. And so. Not a lot of smoke time? Nope. This is the first cigar I have had. Oh, my. When did I have one last? Did I have one Friday before I picked him up? I don't know if I did. I was busy with stuff on Friday. I had, like, some worky stuff. So I'm thinking this might be my first one since, like, Thursday. All right. Like Thanksgiving. Wow. So, yeah. I know, right? Hmm. Doing the cold draw? I am doing the cold draw. All right. I'm going to pretend like that's a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. <laughs> you taste anything? Ooh, cherry. See? Look at you. You do taste something. I do. See? Just like that. The cold draw mm. becomes relevant. My draw was a smidge on the tighter side, so I decided to go back and give it a V cut along with the straight cut, and now it's drawn nice. So yeah, you get a little dried cherry going on, a little, a little earthiness, a little smoky, a little earthiness, kind of, kind of. I'm getting to lighting. Not dirt, but basically <laughs> dirt. I, I mean, did. you know, what? It's I a did. flavor note. I'm not saying it derogatory. I'm just saying, you know. So yeah, so I'm firing up because, by God, I want my cigar. So while you. Uh, we have to open a window in here. Oh, yeah. I'm I sure. thought we could get away without it. <laughs> yeah, well, we have the one, but I can open up that one there. No, I closed it because I was getting cold. Mm. Oh, it feels good to be out here. Yeah, you don't have any fans or ventilation. I had a fan. I don't feel like it worked well. Oh, well. Here, we'll just. We'll have to. Uh... Get some crosswind going here. Figure it's going to get chilly. Out. It is cold out. Oh, yeah. No, it's nasty cold out. But that's why I berated you into putting up the tent today so that we could do this. <laughs> so true. it all works out. <laughs> anyway, um, so what you been up to? A, a lot. It's the, been a minute uh, since you've been on. It's been only a couple weeks. I but it hadn't been quite as bad as the previous no, no, gap. No, but, no. You know. but I feel like my entire house is different. We got... Like, half of our kitchen appliances decided to go out the same week. Um, so we did that. Uh, our roof finally got fixed from a July storm. So. Well, that's nice. Got a new roof in the last two weeks. You don't have that bucket in the bathroom anymore <laughs> no. catching the rainwater? No. That's good. Um, that's good. You know, you saw Christmas lights are up. It is. I love this time of year. I know. You're I'm, a big Christmas person. I love everything about it. And. Uh, Corona Pinky sort of makes a, <laughs> an appearance this time of year because I intentionally don't ridiculously plan my life. I love it. It's, okay. okay. I'm feeling really good about okay. life right now. Now, now you do. All right. How do I how do I phrase this? You do offer assistance to people with their Christmas planning, though. Yeah, I have not this year, but in prior years. I have taught a class on how to prepare for Christmas. Now, it it sounds ridiculous, mm -hmm. but for people who don't want the hustle and bustle okay. of December, some people relish in the stress of it. They love the busyness. They love all of the crazy that goes into this time of year. Okay. But for people who don't. I don't. Uh, I have taught a class on how to basically plan now to enjoy later. Okay. So um, the method is, and I've done this for years, even before I taught a class on it. Um, every the 
the 25th of every month, starting in July, I spend a couple hours planning for Christmas. Oh my gosh. And it, it, that sounds excessive, but really it's like July 25th, I have a list of things I do, right? I clean out binders from last year. I start making the list of things to buy people. Um, July, August, and September, the list is pretty light. Starting in October, it gets a little heavier but like I just do maybe one or two hours on the 20 so once a month I do one to two hours and then when December 1st rolls around I'm done like even right now today is what the 20 something I'm done yeah yeah Christmas is I'm ready to go huh I'm so are you a Christmas card sender usually yes okay I am not do we're not doing that this year because you're not um, that letter person are you no Okay. I'm not that creative. Nope. We do a picture. It's not a matter of being creative. It's a matter of being vain. Because, look, here's oh. the thing. I appreciate to get a nice nice greeting in the mail that tells me, like, you know, hey, I'm thinking of you at the holiday time. That makes me feel special. Do I need to receive a novel that details oh, every I single like thing that took place throughout the year with this? I like pe- those. I don't need that. Here's the thing. It used, I don't need that. It used to be more relevant before all the social media, right? It was yeah. a way to catch you up on people's lives that you hadn't seen or heard from in a year. It's a little less relevant now, but I still love it. I like hearing I, about their I, vacations they took and you, I, lay I, it on me. Well, I am becoming more of a curmudgeon. My dad pointed this out <laughs> to me the other day. He's like, every time you're on with Pinky, you just become a Grinch. But, you know, but I mean, I don't. I don't need those letters. Hmm. Oh, oh, speaking of my dad little brief update the neighbor has replaced the jack-o'-lantern head on her light with a snowman head Yay. as predicted <laughs> literally on thanksgiving day that there took place so yeah the uh the changeover has, has taken happened place. that's official <laughs> it's official it's official neighbor watch 2023 it has taken okay. place anyway sorry that's back all right to the topic so I, I we usually so. do a christmas card and that's one of the first things get that gets planned is mm-hmm. you know depending you know, we're not somebody that's going to pay for family photos and then, you know, da, da, we'll just, I but I have to pick a, a time frame for two, you know, in November, we'll go out to the local p- park and take pictures. All of that's planned You're going to go romp in a field? No. Wearing your Sometimes sweaters? No. But like sweaters. I'll buy, in order to spread out the expense of Christmas, like I, when we send Christmas cards, I will buy the postage in three tranches starting okay. in July. I'm sorry, in what? Tranche. Tranche. That's a financial term for oh. when you buy things uh, in stages. Oh, I just would have said three purchases, but oh. I'm not fancy like Pinky. Well, tranche. It's, it's There's your word of the day, folks. <laughs> tranche. You buy something in tranche. You're buying it in tranche. Like if you're going to, if you eventually want to own a hundred shares of Apple, you're probably not going to go in and buy all hundred. You're going to like buy, you're going to ease into it. So, so you buy say, it in tranches. So if let's say you wanted to buy a box of cigars, but you didn't have the like, Three hundred dollars up front. Maybe you go in and you buy like a third of the box in one purchase, and then in another tranche you buy another third. <laughs> That's true. That, okay, so <laughs> there you go. I think it most. Yeah, I, I, I guess it would work with cigars. I don't. I don't know. I, it, I've always heard it, and I use it in financial terms. Mm. Like you, you buy tranches of stock. But Sorry. like. Would postage count as a financial? Well, to me, that's a financial transaction. I don't know. I guess cigars is I mean, I did have a dream one time where I was at the casino, and I was betting big, and I was going to, I mean, I was going to win. I was going to win. I felt it in my bones, but I didn't have the cash, and so I then suddenly produced a pocket full of postage stamps and threw those down on the table, (laughs) and the dealer was like, we don't take that, and I'm like, whatever. That is, that is postage stamps of the united states postal system backed and I by the federal this. government they're backed and i am betting with stamps and they are forever stamps even so yeah so um yeah at one point i did have a dream that i was betting at the casino with stamps so that so is, the, you know what maybe it is a financial transaction so we'll go back to tranche that is hysterical so yeah postage stamps fdic insured potatoes potato potato whatever who cares Oh, man, that's funny. Anyway, Post so... Most teams are expensive these days. But that's yeah, no right kidding. There. So that would be an example of something that, you know, mo- this year we're not doing Christmas cards because we're doing stuff around our house. And so I'm like, I mean, Christmas cards add up. I mean, it is... Yeah, they do. I can't even imagine what it is now. I'd have to spread it out over like five, five tranches. <laughs> <laughs> I could... 
couldn't do three. And I'd have to have, I'd have, to have at least five tranches, five tranches to be able to afford it. We call that the Nick tranche. And I have only, I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking I'm probably only sending to like 20 people, you know. But I got to spread it out over like five tranches. Be like, I need four stamps in this tranche, please. <laughs> what does a stamp even go for these days? Uh, I feel like stamp? it's like 60 something cents. Oh, is it? I think I it thinking is. I was 55. No, nah, I feel like it's like 60. It might be. Because I remember when I got pressured into buying the breast cancer stamps mm. at the post office. I feel like they charged more. They charged they more yes. for that book. And I feel like it was mm-hmm. like 75 cents per in that book. Wow. So I feel like it was like 60 something cents. Wow. Whatever. I don't know. I can't remember. I remember one time I ordered. I'm out of touch. I can't tell you what the na- the price of a stamp is. Same. So. I remember a couple of years ago, the post office started offering where you could order stamps and then they would like order it online and they put it in with your mail. So you didn't have to actually like go to the post office. Yeah. Which is like my, my worst nightmare. I hate going to the post office. Don't get me started. I but, bet. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I ordered them online, and I swear to God, Nick, it took 10 days to show up in my mailbox. Like, oh, no. no silly no, no. me. I thought, like, maybe the postal carrier carried stamps around with them, and, like, they'd you see that think, I got this order, and, like, the next day. I mean, like, think, I could have you? ordered from Amazon. And but it see, <laughs> you know why? They don't trust the postal carriers, because those are valuable. They could go out to the casino and start betting at the craps <laughs> table with the little cart of, uh, or box of stamps that they their have in their little buggy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're going to go and go over and do that and the, the, take the little buggy down to the Casino Queen and start betting craps, you know? Oh, man. That's what I'm saying. You got to watch those guys. I just thought, isn't that the government, though? To order something that should be a simple two-step process. Yeah, and 10 well. days later, I was like, oh, look, the stamps I ordered four presidents you know, ago. That, that's the really <laughs> weird thing about the post office. And I'm sure I have some listener out there that's working for the post office and in all fairness i do want to say that your average letter carrier are good people oh i think they're all well there's the bureaucracy the i know there's are, the yes. bureaucracy i don't the hold bureaucracy this is the problem correct but that's neither yes. here nor there like the people i deal with at the one post office there's only one person that i didn't really care for and i haven't seen her in quite some time you know so that's good and you are not the um, first or only person i've heard has she, was, a problem. she was a horrible human being Horrible human being. Which is so odd. You wouldn't think that in the couple minutes of interactions you would. (laughs) I stood outside ringing the bell for an hour one time. Every five minutes I rung the bell for an hour waiting for her to unlock the door so that I could bring my newspapers in. Wow. When I finally saw her emerge from the break room, which, mind you, is right by the door she had to unlock to come and let me in just so I could set my papers down and leave. Okay, I didn't have to even talk to her. All I had to do was just get in the door, set them down and leave. She proceeded to tell me she was on lunch. She sat there on her fat ass in that break room, eating her sandwich for an hour, listening to me stand outside the door, buzzing the buzzer for five every five minutes. She sat there listening to that instead of getting up to let me in, because heaven forbid it would interrupt her lunch break. Wow. Tell me how you really feel. Oh, she can burn in hell. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway. I feel know. like you're holding back on us. <sighs> Whatever. What are you getting on your cigar now? Um, you know what? I'm getting a <laughs> cigar right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, It's got what I call like an appropriate spice to it. Like I feel like if someone wasn't into, you know, cigars with a strong spice, they would still like this one. Yes. Did you um, just retrohale? I did just that retrohale. Was, that was smooth. It's super smooth. That was it's smooth. kind of like... <laughs> So in all fairness, I read a very elaborate, very fanciful description of this cigar prior to uh, starting the uh, recording here. And one thing in that description that it noted is that it starts with a baking spice flavor. And I will 100% agree. I think it's a baking spice flavor note off the front. Baking spice? Yeah, like... Look at that burn line. Yeah, Can like, we just like, admire like that burn not, line? Not pepper... It is very tight. Wow. It's a nice burn line. Wow. But um, I like, don't want to ask. Like baking spice, like a nutmeg oh, okay. kind of, okay. you know, things you would get in, well, like a lot of things that we just had at Thanksgiving, you know, pumpkin pie and various things of that nature. So, yeah. But no, it's it's a very fine cigar. And you're right. The burn line is very good. I did ash because I was, my ash was starting to grow a little bit. And I was so, just yeah, a little I was worried. on the paranoid side mm-hmm. about it dropping. But it's, it's, it's holding Holding well, so. 
Didn't want to drop ash in my lap. You know, I feel like that sounds dirty. <laughs> anyway, um. So, anyways, that's my life. It's been it's been we great. We were talking about stamps, and then I got on the whole thing about how I don't like that one lady. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so Christmas cards. So you you, you would have normally had that done. And I will not. And, we're not uh, doing that this year. Okay. We're gonna take the money we would have spent. So do on you that have any? So towards. okay. So it's late in the season now. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, everybody should have everything all set and ready. But let's say you're a lazy bum like me, and you don't have anything prepped and ready for Christmas. Is there any sort of last minute whatsoever tip that you can just be like, "This will help you out in about two weeks." The thing that comes to mind, other is, than go and do your shopping right now. So you're well, like people tend Christmas to feel Eve. overwhelmed. Yeah, you know, they're like they put it off. They've been putting it off. And the thought of getting it done is really overwhelming. So they just keep waiting and just keep waiting. So what I think about is like, I mean, first of all, like, just do the next thing, whatever the next thing is, like start the buying process. And in my experience, that leads to, okay, now you've done this. Now it, it you just keep going. I, you know, I have got to start tracking throughout the year of the little things that I buy people. Yeah, we talked about that last I time. I know. Yeah. I've got to do that. And then you can just like write down what you've given them, send it to them in a card and said, hey, hope you enjoyed the, like the year that you got me the, the nub, the, the sticker. Yeah. What's it called? The cigar poker, uh, poker tool. The, the, not poker tool, the little cigar nub tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like you could have sent me a text at Christmas or a Christmas card and said, hey, hope you're still enjoying that. You know, thought of you, blah, blah, blah. Are you still enjoying that? Well, the Denver Broncos little button fell off of it. Okay. And I don't know where it is at this time. <laughs> so, no. I've got, she's not enjoying no, it anymore. I'm not. It, <laughs> I th- feared, I think I've lost it in my travels. Oh, my God. I know. My God. Why did okay. you have to ask me about that? Because I knew what the answer was. You told me at one point oh, that you I lost, lost it already, so I wanted to put you on the spot. And I was thinking today was, <laughs> as I was setting up in here, because I normally have like a spot where I keep all my yeah. you know, paraphernalia, uh, and I don't have one. That's the only one I've ever had. I used it exclusively, and mm-hmm. now now mm-hmm. I have none. So, but It's okay. Yeah. So my, okay. my, my tip or trick would be to just buy the one thing. Don't think about all the things you have to buy. Buy the one thing. And then second of all, like figure out what's important to you. You know, like, yeah, is, it, you know, instead of buying the things, like think about this season. Like, is there something, if, if what's important to you is to, you know, sustain friendships or let people know how you feel, then you don't have to buy them something to yeah, express Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to come off sounding cheap. I don't want to buy anything anybody for anybody this year. I'm in a very, like, then don't kind of minimalist kind of mindset myself yes, right now. Yes, I love hearing that. You know, I've got too much shit as it is, and I need to, like, parse through it. And, like, don't get me wrong. I need things. I need a new mattress. My mattress is worn out, and I need a new mattress. I need a new laptop. My laptop is mm, struggling. Um, You know, but those are big things that I'm not going to be like, hey, Santa, because, you right, know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, let's be real. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's too expensive to be asking Correct. somebody for. Um, on the flip side of that, I don't need anything else. Like another book, another this. I don't. I mean, look, do I would I maybe like it? Yeah, but I don't need it. And it's more right. shit for me to move at some point anyway. So I, you know, it, this whatever. might be an unpopular opinion, but I think it's perfectly fine because I'm also a practical minimalist, mm-hmm. like not just at heart in reality. Um, I think it's perfectly fine to have conversations with people. Let's say your parents. I'm going to assume that your parents will probably want to get you something for Christmas. Yeah. I think it's fine to this year just say, hey, you guys, I always appreciate what you get me. Um, Can I just tell you that this year the best gift to me would be money? Oh, we've gone down that road years ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that road's taken care of. Okay. Um. It's more, it's not so much even more things for me from people at this point, because, uh, yeah, I don't really get gifts from many people, um, but, like, the the list of people that I have to buy for, and even then, if I actually looked at the list of people that I'm thinking about, more than likely, there's a handful of them that don't even expect anything, and another handful of them that are like, you know, why did you do anything, you know, that yeah, kind of thing, yeah. so, like, Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I just feel like 
there's that there's that societal pressure that that expectation that you're going to be going out and spending a ton of money on gifts and just you know showing up with that sack of presents for everybody and and it's just I don't I don't I know that. it's the you but know? that's the people pleaser in you and like it's my kid and like for example my kid Max doesn't need anything he doesn't need anything you know there's no toys that kid needs at this point um you know I can get him some clothes and things of that nature but realistically. He's not going to be excited about that, so I'm not going to wrap it up. I remember as a kid not being excited when I opened up clothes, so I'm not going to yeah, wrap yeah. up clothes and be like, here you go, Max. And then he's yeah. going to open up and be like, oh, huh. you know, yeah. so I'm not going to do that. So then it becomes like, what do you get the kid? You got to get the kid something. something yes, I, I mean, because it's a kid. Yes. But I don't know what to do there. You know, and, and I don't want to just spend money. On and it does not get easier crap, the older they get. I'll tell you, you know? that. Because that's the thing. Right I now, long for the days it's of crap. little tykes. I know. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yep. I don't know what to do. Anyway. Well, this has been a fun conversation. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm <laughs> talking Christmas. I don't know. This is why I like Thanksgiving. I mean, this is why I like it's your Thanksgiving. Favorite holiday. So it really is. I had such a great Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. I just I got to eat so much good food. And there was no expectation of gift giving mm-hmm. whatsoever. And I had leftovers, and it was great, and I was happy. And I just, now I'm, like, over that, and now we're getting into the Christmas thing. And it's just, I don't have room for a tree. I don't even have my ornaments. My ornaments are still in the attic of my old house because, Mm. heaven forbid, my ex-wife get down the ornaments and parse through them so that I can have my ornaments back. And, uh, you know, that's a whole other thing. I won't get into that. But, um, you know, it's just that kind of stuff. I don't... I don't the thing. have anything going on Are right now. Are you not at the point in your life where you're like, you know what, gosh darn it, I'm an adult with agency over myself. If I want Christmas to be like Thanksgiving, damn it, I'm going to make Christmas be like Thanksgiving. No, because there's expectations. That's the problem. Well, there's, have those conversations with people that you think have those. Do they really have the expectation or you think they have the expectation? I don't know. I look at it that, oh God, how do I put this? Um... There's only so many Christmas that, like, everybody's around. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm kind of like, I'm not counting down. I'm not looking forward to the uh, post. But what I'm saying is, for right now, I'm enjoying them as they are. Yes. Because later, they won't be as they are. Mm -hmm. And so then, I can go to Las Vegas for Christmas, and nobody's going to give two shits. Or I can go to a beach somewhere for Christmas. And nobody's going to give two shits. Yeah. You know, and that that's that that's where I'm looking ahead. I see that. Yeah. But like for right now. Yeah. There's the typical standard Christmas obligation. Yes. Yes. And so that's kind of where I'm at. Yep. Yeah. No, I I hear (laughs) you. I hear you. Yeah. We have one. Well, you and I both. You have one kid. I have one kid. Mm -hmm. And I am. I guess it's an aging thing. I am keenly aware of how many, how more many more Christmases, not only with like, you know, our folks, yeah, but until our son leaves the house and goes like, I saw this statistic that's like the number of hours you spend with people in your life and like your kids, you spend 75% of the time you are ever going to spend with your kids by the time they're 18. And I just like want to cry thinking about that. I was going to say, that's really sad, actually. It is. And um, so, and that's but why. But that's also the the role of the parent. I know. And that's something that we as parents, no, nobody thinks about. Nobody tells you that when you're like actively like, you know, getting ready to have a child. Nobody talks about like, you know, this is the, the role of the role as a parent is not to keep this kid underneath your yes, your forever and ever. wing forever mm-hmm. the role is to get him or her prepared to you know get life going so that they're they're a functioning human being and and can actively live in the world and be fine right that's that's the whole role so yeah it makes sense that 75 percent of the time that we would spend with our kid would be prior to 18 because after that pff, they're adult I don't care what anybody says. 18 is the legal age of adulthood in this country. And you move on. Yeah. That's a whole nother That's, fucking thing oh. for me. I had this sliding scale of the age of adulthood. Oh, I'm so pissed off about that. It's <laughs> really? not even fun. No, it's bullshit. 
you you know, at 18, you, you, you are an adult in the eyes of the court, okay? So at that point, you can be tried as an adult, all kinds of shit like that, right? Right. But at age 16, you can get a legal, you can get an ID to drive. At 18, now you can go buy pornography and lotto tickets. I think you can get lotto tickets at 18. Mm, could be. I know back when I turned 18, you could get lotto tickets. You could also get cigarettes back right. when you were 18. Now, granted, I wasn't buying cigarettes, but I had the ability to. But now, oh, my God, the evils of tobacco. Now, 21 is the age to get both booze and cigarettes or cigars or whatever else and everything like that. You can you can sign up for the military at 18, but you can't have right. you know booze or mm-hmm. alcohol until then. But, oh, 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 there's a contingent that want. 16 year old people to be able to vote so now let's push that back and go from the age of 18 to 16 so what is the age of adulthood here is it 16 is it 18 is it 21 you know i mean it's it's ridiculous and there's no logic there's right it's all super arbitrary there is. is no logic in how we came about a lot of these coming of age mm-hmm. things that we Used to define Precisely. adulthood. So what needs to happen is we just need to sit down and we need to say, okay, what is an adult? Oh, yeah. By the way, you could be on your fucking parents' health insurance till what, 27? 26. 26? Yeah. I mean, come on. That's, that's, I could see, I could see 22 to 23. Get them through college. Yeah. If they're going to do the average four yeah. year, f- four year, let's even say 23 so we can tack on a year because let's be real. Who gets through college in four years these what days? What was it it's before probably... it was 26? 18. You... Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, so let, let's just say, you know, we'll even tack on a year for a five year college stint and we'll say 23. Get the kid through college. After that, it's on their own. They got to go and get a job. They got to get health insurance, you know, or they can go to the marketplace. I have my health insurance through the marketplace. It's not bad. It's not as cheap as the fucking commercials. Uh, the, the commercials are misleading. The commercials yeah. make it sound like I can get health care for $40 a month. You can, but you're going to get a plan that has a like $15,000 deductible yeah. that you'll never be able to meet in case something catastrophic ever happens to you. But hey, whatever, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Uh, I just, anyway, back to my original point, the sliding scale of adulthood is crap. And we need to just establish what is an adult yeah. and just put all the benchmarks at that point. So here's a question for you. In attempting to do that, I think there is, that's going to pop out. Burr. The nope. tent has some structural damage. We, yeah, it sustained some significant damage last year. At the end of the tent season, it came down uh, in a blaze of glory when it <laughs> ended up nearly over my neighbor's fence. Oh, that was when it just ended, right? It that, ended. You, I can, you took the tent it was down a for rain, the season at that it point. It was a rain windstorm yeah. that did so much damage to the tent that I didn't realize because I literally came outside, scooped it up, took it into my garage, let it dry out, and yeah. then folded it up and put it away. I didn't realize that that bottom spoke there. Now goes through I almost the, wonder if maybe if you were to uh, get like another cinder block and pop it right there in the corner. Outside or inside? Inside. Oh, That maybe. way it was braced. You know? I don't know. It almost doesn't matter. Like, oh. we literally live in a wind tunnel here. So what you're saying is you're going to find this tent in the neighbor's yard. Well, that's why later. when you texted oh, me true. earlier and you, you were, were like, getting get rope, <laughs> I had to, I have to tie it to mm-hmm. like the gazebo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The gazebo is nailed into the cement patio here. But I do anyway. wonder if, if we laid um, cement on the other side of the deck, yeah. like I th- we've got a, a shed over there yeah. that for all intents and purposes should have been blown away years ago and it doesn't i think it's because it like the fence protects it and it's like closer uh, to the house so i don't think over there it's quite as windy not nearly as windy okay over okay. here because the Super house windy. the house goes back there yeah and you know i think wind comes over the hill and just i think we're just in danger zone here okay all right well anyway <laughs> so, so back to the topic at hand okay talking so, about sliding so age in legality. defining if we sit down and said, okay, we're going to like logically try to decide when people become adults. Mm-hmm. The question is, male and female brains, 
develop at different rates. They do. So then you get into like, does a male brain attain adulthood at a, you know, a certain age because their frontal cortex hasn't developed as quickly? At, you know what I mean? Oh, women are much more put together before men. Now, granted, I could make some arguments based on looking at some Instagram reels and various TikTok girl <laughs> shit and whatever that females are just as fucked up as men at various stages in their early, you know, adulthood. But that's neither here nor there. Um, Biologically speaking, the brains develop at different um, yeah, I feel like we've slid into a position where everybody's fucking stupid when they're young at this point. <laughs> okay. But that's that's just me being a you know old man. But um, you really are a curmudgeon. I it's boy, it's coming out real it's... strong here lately. Um, um, I I get what you're getting at, and. My point is, is it's all a slippery slope. Like you're making the assumption don't that there believe... is a defined point that. Oh no, there's definitely not. You're uh, saying they need to well, align better. Well, here's the thing: if we were going to say there's a defined point when a human being becomes an adult, a mature adult, nobody would get to do anything until they're fucking thirty, <laughs> at least. So we can't say, yeah, eighteen or whatever. And and you know, I mean, we have. There has to be some like rationalization. I mean, yeah, thirty is is not logical. So I'm just saying, if if we're gonna arbitrarily say that eighteen is the age of adulthood, then what needs to happen is driving needs to get pushed up to eighteen, not at sixteen. Needs to be pushed up to eighteen. Nope. Alcohol and tobacco need to be pushed back to eighteen. Voting. And um, lotto tickets and military service and gun ownership can all stay at 18. And then at that point, 18 is the year that when you become 18, by God, the whole world is open to you and you can do whatever you want. The world is your oyster. Right? Mm. No more of this like, well, I turned this age. Oh, yeah. And the other one, 25 to rent a car. You know? Now, that... That's an independent company the, making that. I was going to say, that's an independent company making that decision. That's at least not a law, so I guess I can understand. And and realistically, if I were going to loan somebody my car, I wouldn't want to loan to anybody that was maybe under 25. Because, I mean, again, what did I just say? 30 is the magic year that I feel like people turn <laughs> into a respectable, mature adult. So, you know, whatever. But... That's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think if we need to pick one, it, it, what's it going to be? 18 at least makes logical sense because it's the year that you're a senior in high school. So by the time you're getting out of high school, I don't feel like you can you can send kids away to college without a driver's license, without, you know, like logic. There are certain things that logically they need mm -hmm. when they go off to college. So I don't think 21 is the is the answer there. I also think that in terms of alcohol, the United States is a horrible job of dealing. We're, we're, we're stuck in our puritanical ways mm -hmm. as it pertains to alcohol consumption in this country. If we start looking at the way they do it over in Europe, where they introduce wines and beers to kids... As they grow, and it's not this evil thing that, oh, right. you stay away from alcohol yeah. until you turn 21, and they get fucking drunk, you know? Maybe we wouldn't have all this ignorance and stupidity that takes place at high school parties where kids are trying to hide it, yeah. and then college when kids are, like, overindulging because they've, they've been never good had it, yeah. for 21 years, and now they're legally able to, and they're just going out and getting wasted. If we were to introduce it throughout their life... They would have more respect for it. They'd understand it. And it wouldn't be that big of a deal when they turn 21 or whatever age we dictate. Yeah. There's definitely an element to uh, they, they, they want what they can't have. Oh. For sure. That's why people are all about like, Cuban cigars. You know, it's like it's that forbidden fruit situation. You know, it's like you, you, you want something that you can't have. But, I mean, it doesn't make it good. But whatever. Anyway. So... There's that. <laughs> we just ranted about that. So, anyway, um, I'm I'm really digging this. I'm at Same. about the halfway point on this uh, timeless black here. I think I'm and, at about uh, maybe two. Th 
I, 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 they were about the same. We're about the same, actually. We're about the same. God, I'm so proud of this burn line. I don't know. It's really good. That's like something to be proud of right there. It's some really, really good construction there from the folks at Ferry Otago. It really is. Well, why don't we now go ahead and do this? It's time for the Villager Cigars Entertainment Report. Brought to you by Villager. Villager Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villager Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. So, okay. So, I've had Max this weekend, which means I've watched a lot of Thomas the Tank Engine. Mm -hmm. We did introduce a little Clifford the Big Red Dog into the yeah, picture, yeah. so I'm good with that. Um, but by and large, I really haven't watched anything uh, new since then. So, um, what do you Well, have? remind me, did you ever watch the Murda, uh document, not documentaries, maybe they are considered documentaries, about... The North Carolina family, they're called the, the Murdaws, and they're like a third generation attorneys, and... Do they kill people? Yes. No, I think I've heard of this, but I don't think I've ever oh, actually you, you watched Oh, you should watch this. it. You should watch it. What is this? It's interesting. Well, so the... It started... Well, this goes back to the rant you were just on about underage drinking and stuff. So, I mean, basically, it's an... an the rant. My... It, it was. <laughs> it was my soapbox. You Thank were... You were... Potato, potato. <laughs> you were pretty worked up about it. I was. Um, so, it's a basically an entitled family who the kid ends up, you know, they have several kids, ends mm -hmm. up drinking and smoking and stuff. Um Ends up out on a boat. His okay. family owns one or more boats. Okay. Uh, in the dark. Okay. Uh, crashes the boat. One or two people died. And this kid was like 15, 16 maybe when it happened. Um, so there was that started it. And then people in their town just started dying. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Then, and so the... The kid, the 15, 16 year old, his dad is an attorney. The grandpa is an attorney that started this big law firm in North Carolina, I think. Um, I mean, think about these are bros. I'm talking like collared polos flipped uh -huh. up, you know, the bros, bros, probably I went to high school educated. with some of them. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so then people start dying. Well, then the, the wife dies and the son that was in the accident die. Oh. Same night. They're murdered. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I don't want to give it away for What's you. What's the name of this, though? I think it's called the Murda Trials or whatever. It's on Netflix. On Netflix? It's, yeah, the, it's a okay. series. I think the first season, I mean, it's a true story. The first season is maybe five or six episodes, and it's like all the, I mean, but it gets, it gets wild. Their housekeeper dies. Okay. So, you know, like they basically lead you to believe like people know stuff and the people who know stuff end up not, they, they end up becoming unalived. Okay. So I think you would. So. It's just interesting. You've it's, prompted me. I remembered something. Something that I did. I watched the first episode of it on Thanksgiving night, actually. Okay. It's on HBO. Okay. It's a documentary called uh, The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Never heard of it. This family in Indiana, really close to where my dad lives, um, they adopt what they think is this little girl, and um, they think she's maybe like six, you know? Okay. Six to eight, somewhere in that range. She's obviously, she, she has some developmental um, disabilities, and so they think that they're adopting this little girl. Well, then she has a period and various things. So they kind of like start piecing this together. And they're under the belief that this is not a like six to eight year old child. 
but actually like a grown ass adult pretending to be <gasps> a child and like what? it unravels from there. Now I've only watched the first episode. And this is a true story? Yeah. But like shit goes down. Like Ooh, I'm watching that. It gets crazy. I'm watching that. From what I'm told. Interesting. So I've watched the first one. I have many more to go. Okay. But uh, yeah, The Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Okay. I just texted it to myself. Okay. Um, remind me, have you seen Ted Lasso? Did you watch that? No, because the thing is, it's on Apple TV. Okay. I don't have a subscription. That's probably the one streaming service yeah, I yeah. don't have a subscription to. But like, there's not enough on there that I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to subscribe to that. You don't want to do... So, um... so. But wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'm going to get to it. Okay. Because there's a Godzilla show. That's like coming to Apple TV and <laughs> that's why. No. <laughs> yeah. It looks badass. It's got Kurt Russell and it's actually got Kurt Russell's son and they're playing the same character, but they're playing them in two different time periods, mm. 50 years apart. So like Kurt Russell's playing the current day old man version and his son is playing him, the, this character back like 50 oh, years ago. Okay. And so I think that's kind of badass. But anyway, it, it's Godzilla related and everything you... like that. So I'm waiting for that to be done. Okay. Because I don't know if they're trickling it out or if they're just throwing out the whole season. I need to find that out. If they're throwing out the whole season, I'm going to find myself a one-week like yes, free, free trial. Yes. And then I'm basically just going to binge the shit out of Godzilla and Ted Lasso. Okay. And then after that, pull the plug. But yeah. I'm okay. waiting for that. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. Because that's, we've done that with, like, we just want to watch, like, we wanted to watch Outlander. And at the time, it was on, I don't even remember. So we got the one-month subscription oh. to something or other. Cindy at Riverman really likes that show. <sighs> and that's why she likes my kilt. Oh. Right? <laughs> I know. Okay. I'm like, I don't quite know if I meet the physical standards. No. I mean, no offense, but no. <laughs> wow. Look how quick she was with that, guys. That was like an immediate no. Negative, you know? Ghost Rider. That pattern is full. No, nope. Just, there nope. has to be some portly, uh, you know, Scottish guys in their kilts on that show. They can't all be like well, buff and No, ripped. a couple of the characters are, they're bigger. They're husky men of yeah. size. Yeah. yeah. You know. They're warriors. It's like in Little, er, what was it? Robin Hood. You had Little John. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, Outlander was very good. Uh, we watched that years ago. But Ted Lasso it, it's very, with all the heaviness that goes on in the world, like it is a lighthearted, but the writing on the show is really good. I okay. mean, he is a, and I was not a uh, Jason Sudeikis fan mm -hmm. before this. I I don't like SNL generally. Um, but his character, it's great character development. And it is quick writing. I mean, he's really witty. It's fun. Okay. It is fun. So we started watching that. Um, my in-laws, we hosted Thanksgiving this year. My in-laws came up and we were going to do cards one night. I love playing cards and games. Like I would do a I cigar do poker night like every week See, if I could. I don't know how to play poker. Otherwise, I would be down for no, that. No, I would even but do like, like, there's a game, God, we played up in Wisconsin uh, with my friend. It's called three, 3 to 13 or something like that. Uh, it's a... It's got like 13 rounds to it. It goes quicker than it sounds. Anyway, uh, we were going to do a card night, and Javier's not a fan of cards. Oh. So and they were talking about, I said, oh, Ted Lasso, I love that show. They had never seen it. So we started watching it and re-watching it. Man, it's even better the second time. Hmm. So I hope that I hope this Godzilla show, if that's your in to get, it's my end. To get it. Okay. It's I hope that end. comes out soon then. It ties in with the movies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. too. So it's like it's the next chapter of the whole, you know, Godzilla okay. and Kong and all that. So it's like, I got to see it. I know it's Godzilla, for God's sake. Nothing sakes. about those. It's a guy thing. I, I get it. I mean, so I'm not saying that there aren't women that appreciate the giant kaiju, but, uh, <laughs> you know. The giant what? Kaiju. It's the monsters. That's the term. Oh, really? For the, that's a generic term for the giant monsters that trample Tokyo. Kaiju. I did not know that. There you go. Nerding out today I'm, a little I'm bit. <laughs> We're going to talk about Kaiju <laughs> on the cigar pulpit. Anyway, yeah. Oh, I learned something new today. Kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Okay, I'm not a Star Wars person, but um, so our city has a huge parade, which was yes. last night. God, I've lost track of time. Two nights yes. ago. No, it was last night. Anyway. Was it Saturday night? Yes. Oh, yeah. It would have been yeah, last night. So okay. there was an inflatable, what you and I would call an at-at. Uh-huh. Right? AT-AT. No, that's what, what do you call it? AT-AT? AT-AT. 
the little I've, walker thing yes. that they like on the ice planet, I, which is the stupidest vehicle known to man. Why would you send your tank in on four legs and make it go super slow? Mm. It's like it's just asking to be taken out. But you call it an ATAT? ATAT. I've only ever heard it now. There's I'm a, another again. one, and I don't remember what that one looks like. It's an ATST. I mean, there's all kinds of different. Yeah. I've only ever heard of it as referred to as the at at. I mean, it's the same thing. I know, but I'd never. And then, um, friends... well, one don't get you pegged as a Star Wars guy. The other one will, you know, not. The ATAT and I'm not, and is I'm a not, Star Wars. And fan. I'm not much of a Star Wars person, but I. I well, know so it's, the it's family easy. we were with, they've got a teenage son who is a huge Star Wars fan, and he, we were, I was like, oh look, it's the at at, and it was like, no, it's ATAT. I'm like, no, I've never heard it called AT. Well, probably because I don't hang around with many. Well, actually, my stick with me. You'll hear all <laughs> kinds of fun terminology. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right, so we've thrown out a couple <laughs> show suggestions. The Murdoch stuff you should watch. Like okay. if you're sitting in your tent tonight or whatever, like that would be. I could. I don't know. I have all kinds of stuff I need to do. It's just it's this, really but... interesting. Do you did you ever listen to the podcast about um, the thing about pain? You yeah, because you yeah, turned me I'm on the to one it. who turned you on to the thing. So about So you know Pam. how you're listening to it and you're like, it just gets weird. You're like, there's no way this is. Like real life because it like yeah. it wasn't one big weird thing that happened. It, it was, was like a, a little bunch of little, and you're like, "There's no way she did this," yeah. and then she did it. That's how this this family is. You're like, "Okay, there's no like this is crazy that this first thing even happened, and then all the little things that happened after that." I'm like, mm, mm-mm. "See, the thing is, all those little things take place, but there's got to be that one thing that draws the attention." And then suddenly all those little things get noticed. Yes. If it wouldn't have been for that one yep. thing, yep. all those other little things would have gone unnoticed and nobody would have paid any attention. It would have been just whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, the good thing about at least the Murdoch show is the trial is over with. So mm. you, you, anybody who's kept up with it knows like, okay, I know how I'm this is going to end. I'm pretty sure that it's the same situation with the Curious Case of Natalia Grace. Oh, okay. I think at that... There might be a second thing coming on that, like a further update, but I'm pretty sure. Well, I know the dad ended up going to jail. That, and the mom. Why, why are you giving it away, bro? Oh, I'm going to listen to it. I mean. Or watch it. You'll figure that. The, I'm not telling you anything you didn't know. Mm. Well, I mean. You, uh, clearly you, I didn't you know didn't it. You didn't know it. But I mean, but like, yeah, things go really fast. Okay, so here's crazy. a question. When you're watching, let's say, shows I knew that like what we're talking about. Are you spending a lot of time, like, looking ahead? Like, you know where this is going to go. Well, this, when it was told to me to watch this, it was pitched in such a way that, like, I knew that ultimately the parents were responsible. Well, no, or, they're not. There's still questions about whether or not she's. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But are you. But the parents are like, fucked up enough that they both end up in jail. Are you connecting the dots all the whole time you're watching stuff? Because, like, the reason I'm I asking. Try. So, when Javier and I watch a show, he is forever, like, he'll just make a comment out loud. Oh, well, that chick's going to die. I'm See, like, I don't Stop! necessarily do that, but, I, when, but when something does get revealed, something, like, comes along, then at that point I'm like, oh, you know, like okay. that. Like, I just finished the first season of True Detective on HBO. Oh, he's watching that, too. And, uh... There's a th- well. I don't want to say this now. Cause right, because I'm 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 gonna watch that. I don't want to say you know, but there's a thing that happens, and suddenly you you see this character, and you're like, oh my god, and then all things become okay. clear, and things get. So weird. he, my husband, so. is always like five steps. He's intentionally thinking, where is this gonna go? Where yeah. I don't do that. I sit there and I live in the moment of the show, and so everything surprises me. It's wonderful. Whereas he's very like I don't try and guess because I'm oh, always he's... usually pretty wrong when I guess. Oh, well, you know? same. Um, sometimes I get it right, but sometimes I, you know, most of the time I don't. Yeah. And so, so I don't try and guess necessarily, but I do at least try to make note and catalog things so that if it does come back and become relevant, I can be like, wait, Ooh, a minute, I called that. That's that thing, and that's mm-hmm. that thing, and that means this is gonna be this, and then I can figure okay. that out. So yeah. So, I don't know. Oh, there, there you go, listeners. You've got some, yeah. some shows to watch this holiday season For if you sure. find some time on your hands. All kinds of fun stuff to watch. 
Anyway, well. Murder shows and unknown biological children stories. Hey, I mean. Have fun. That, yeah, tr- all true. All true, no less. It's no at-at. <laughs> no at-at. <laughs> No, at, at. I did also see that the new Doctor Who special dropped, and I want to watch that. That's on Disney Plus. No. I like the Doctor. Do you sign up for Disney Plus? I do. Oh. I got all the Marvel shit that way. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, you need to drop that for a month and pick up. uh, I need to drop a lot of them for a while. Because to be honest, that whole thing, the whole streaming thing, that's all added up to the point that it's like, this is expensive. Do you know what? As consumers, we did this to ourselves. Oh, I know. Like we thought seventy dollars back in the day was too much for cable, and now we're all paying like a hundred and twenty dollars plus. I'm sorry. Back in the day, cable might have been seventy dollars. It is definitely not seventy dollars now. Do you have any idea how much I spend on cable internet? Just internet. I don't have any cable TV, and I don't have phone. Oh, same. I think ours is seventy a month. Ninety. Mine is 90 oh, a month. To, you need to call and, and threaten I know, to quit. Oh, I know. I know. The problem is where I live, uh, uh, limited options. Spectrum is the only option that That's I have. Why. And so um, now it did not start that way. When I first got it, it was a whole lot cheaper. And all that happens is they just trickle it up, trickle it up, trickle it up, yep. trickle it up. And then next thing you know, you're at 90 yep. fucking dollars for yep. internet. And you don't question it when it's a $4 bump here and there. No, but I do definitely question it when I'm paying ninety dollars and my service keeps like getting spotty mm, and going in mm-hmm. and out and this and that and whatever. So like, oh yeah, no, I got I got I got issues with my internet. Yeah, but, you need to call and threaten to quit. Yeah, I know. They'll give you the introductory rate for a year at least. Uh, I'll give you some that. reprieve. That would be nice. There, you just freed up the I got some Apple money. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. Well anyway, let's 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 learn about my monthly cigars now. This would normally be the time that I give some information about My Monthly Cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks! We're sitting right here saying I that. I know. But it was pre recorded because Nick has yet to get me the new commercials that he wants because he hasn't gotten somebody to record them for him yet. Sorry. It's not my <laughs> fault. It's not your fault. It's Nick's fault. Let's go, Gervais. He's up there playing around with the Cigar Authority guys, getting on there and talking about his fucking coffee. And oh, wow. Like Shots that. fired. But, you know, heaven forbid to get the uh, new ads to me so that I can promote his businesses accordingly. So, whatever. By the way, when you're at MyMonthlyCigars.com, you can pick up some fucking good coffee and uh, give that a try. Try the Daily Press. That's the official cigar pulpit br- blend. Didn't talk about that on the Cigar Authority, did you? You were talking about Expresso on the Cigar Authority. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. Nick, your curmudgeon is showing. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> He's been up my ass about, I met Bill Burr. I met Bill Burr. So you know what? I'm just saying. I see how it is. You know, you meet Bill Burr with some guys, and now all of a sudden they're your new favorite podcast. So whatever. Anyway. um, Yeah. Thoughts on the uh, Ferio Tego Timeless Black here. Um, I've taken off the bands. I, I was not necessarily getting close to the big band. Um, but, uh, it was, it was getting ish close. And mm-hmm. so I figured I'd go ahead and do it. I'm really enjoying this. It's been, it's been a much, um, I don't want to, it, it's been a nice medium. Yes. Like, I would agree like, with that. Yes. It's been a medium. Yes. It hasn't been a full bodied cigar, but it's a nice medium and it, it's been good. It's been very flavorful. Well, and I'm still only about halfway through. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this will be one, once I get that final third, it's going to kick back up. Like, it's very mild right now. Mm-hmm. Slight, slight little tickle on the retro hail. Um, you know, not like. Any sort Ooh, of str- I just did it strong little pepper, yeah. but like a slight little tickle. Like maybe there might be a little something, something there. And, uh, you know, a little m- more to the to the baking spice. I, I wish think. my um, my husband's grandfather 
was very good when he would like try a meal. He yeah. would know. He could. He was like, does that have all the vanilla? ingredients? Oh, every. I'm like, boy, yeah. looking back, I mean, R.I.P. Grandpa. Um, um, I wish he smoked cigars because I'm. He would have probably been very good at like identifying all the particulars. Well, R.I.P. Grandpa. R.I.P. Okay. Well. Anyway. Um. Yeah, so coming up on the show, uh, we are going to have um, Frank Herrera. Uh, he's a uh, attorney who specializes in cigars and cigar law. Um, he's helped out a number of uh, companies with uh, their FDA filings, things of that nature. Does a whole lot of stuff with cigar companies. However, on an unrelated topic, the reason he's coming on is, uh, yeah, he wrote a book. And um, it's a it's a uh, fiction. It's a it's a legal thriller, Ooh. you know, murder mystery thing. But it's like based in cigars and and the cigar industry and all that. So Frank is going to come on, and uh, we're going to talk about his book because I think that's super badass. And uh, I, I want to cool. I want to promote his book. So we've got that coming up, and then uh, Dave Garofalo of the Cigar Authority is coming on because oh, so you know, offend him and now bring him back on. I didn't offend him. I was pissing off Nick Gervais. Okay. I mean, whatever. I mean, you know, authority guys. I got nothing to you know issue with them. But they uh, have an issue with YouTube uh, because YouTube took down 141 of their videos and uh, put them oh. in the penalty box where they couldn't do their live broadcast uh, this past weekend and that sort of thing. Ooh. And so I want to talk. Zero stars. I want to talk to him about that. I want to talk to Dave about. Um, the uh, trade show situation at the beginning of next year. Yeah, I got all kinds of things. It's been a little while since I caught up with Dave. So so we have Frank Carrera and we got Dave Garofalo coming up on the show. So you're going to want to tune in for that. Um, otherwise, we're just kind of coasting to the end of the year. Now, with that being said, this episode is going to drop on November 28th. Um, hang on. Let me bring up the timeline. Um, the timeline for, oh, why can I not find that now? Um, hang on. Uh, boy, I should have probably. Prepared. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it'd be easier for me to find this, uh, of course, why would it possibly be easier for me to find this? Um... Why? Why would it possibly? Um, I, like I don't know. I, I, I can't find shit. Anyway, the bottom line, uh, cigars of the year. 2020, uh, three cigars of the year for, for the uh, uh, pulpit parishioners group. Um, by the time this episode drops, nominations will be over with. However, voting will begin. I believe voting begins on Friday, December 1st. So you're going to want to be in on the parishioners group on Facebook so you can access the uh, the information for voting. And the voting will go through, I believe, Friday, December 8th. So you've got a week to do all the voting. So um, if you're not a member of the Cigar Pulpit Parishioners group on Facebook, it's a closed group. All you got to do is find it and request to join, and I'll let you in. Um, get in on that, and then that way you can vote on the uh, the cigars of the year for 2023. And then um, from the 8th, we'll start announcing winners as we go, which will lead up to the last episode of the year when I will talk about my cigars of the year for 2023. And um, that's when I basically go over my favorite cigars that I smoked on the show for the year. So got that coming up you'll be proud of me i have started um when i take a picture of what i smoke yeah i are you putting in the notes i putting in the well i created a folder in my f um photos mm -hmm. called cigars and i just move everything over to there and then i do a quick note yeah right that now attaches to the photo. the photo yeah there you go the thing that i wish i gotta figure this out so the pictures in my album, mm -hmm. like in my main whatever album on mm -hmm. my phone, you can add it to the cigar album, but you can't, like I want to move it to that album. Like I don't want it. Well, in yeah, my... there's the all photos and then there's yeah. the individual, but it has so it's to stay all, in it's, the all photos. Yeah. Cause if you delete it out of the all photos, it's going to delete out of the other photo. Exactly. Too. I want to move it. I want it to go from all photos 
Like, do you, when you pull up your phone, like, do you default to all photos? Is that yeah. where? Uh, same. Yeah. So it's a shit ton of cigars. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I, know, My, I, I mean, I know mine's not, and I think that well, it's easier is. having the folder now because, like, I can go there to identify, you know, yeah. photos that are the cigar ones. Um, but, you know, in, in my, you know, if I'm sitting there showing somebody something on you my phone. You don't want a whole bunch of cigar pictures yeah, in and amongst all your other pictures. Yeah, I get just it. Just like, get on it, Apple. I like, get fix it. that. Well, I know. Like, have a separate folder that I can move it to. <sighs> now, I do wonder, in your main album. There's got to be, like, an all photos album. You can you can hide a photo in your all. You can hide a photo. Does that hide it, then, from my cigar that's folder? a good question. I've never attempted that because um, there's a hidden folder, which let's be real. Apple, let's talk about that for a moment. You hide pictures, OK? And when you hide a picture, it goes to a folder literally named hidden. I mean, <laughs> is it really fucking hidden if it's in a folder named hidden? Do you have to do any? Do you have to do anything special to get to the hidden folder? Like, is well, like I think it, I, yeah, I think it's either something? password or face. Like, oh, it brings up okay. the face ID thing, and in order to let you in, I did. I honestly kind of like the deleted photos. I think that that's locked down too. That for sure is locked down. Yeah, I think the hidden folder. I didn't even know hiding. But, but it's not. It, but it's my not point actually is, hidden. It's not hidden. It's just like it. There's stuff. I mean, it's there. You know. So like, I didn't even know. I didn't realize you could hide a photo until I started that cigar separate folder mm -hmm. and then i was looking at all of the options when you like click on a photo that you can do with it, and i was like ah oh, hidden yeah which is nice though because then if, again if you're trying to show people like your vacation photos yeah and you know you're thinking like oh god i hope they don't swipe to the next whatever yeah yeah you're like oh i understand <laughs> i took a picture of my kids underwear tag dear god <laughs> <laughs> Like the, the I, sorry, sorry. Tag caught my brain just a slightly less, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" No, he. This is a bizarre admission for you to be making I here. Know. Well, he he does his own laundry, and he, you know, he's getting underwear for Christmas. Let's be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. who who doesn't? I and don't. <laughs> I could probably use some. So I. You have any idea how much fucking underwear I? So the oh, yeah. Oh, I know now. It's stupid. It's, and yeah. Especially if you want the good stuff. Like, okay, I'll, I'll give you a story I, here. I don't need to know so, anything about your drawers. I went to the Duluth Trading Company. Ooh, oh, because that's... Because they got those special underwear that hold the two truckers in place, you know, and they're <laughs> seat belted in. They're not bouncing around all over the place. They're in place. They're tight in the cab of the truck, if you know what I mean. And so I'm like, I wanted some of those. So I went out there and, uh, you know, I find what I think is my size. First of all, you can't fucking try on underwear. You just can't. So I bought what I thought was my size. What my size was, was evidently way smaller than what I bought because these things are like fucking shorts. I mean, these are like gym shorts. They come. I worry if my underwear are going to be poking <laughs> out from below the hem of my shorts, my cargo wow. shorts, because these things are so damn long on my legs. But anyway, there's neither here nor there. But the bottom line is. Oh, I bet you paid a pretty penny for those. I bought it. It was all rolled up. It was in a thing. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's $30. I'm thinking this should probably be like three pair, right? I'm yeah. Thinking, I'm thinking three pair. Three pair, 30 bucks. One <gasps> fucking pair of underwear. I paid $30 for one pair of underwear. <laughs> I didn't know it till I got home. I felt so robbed. And then when I put them on and they were huge and I was like, can't even wear them. These are fucking huge. Oh, I wear them. I wear them. <laughs> My, my my truckers are bouncing around the cab because they're not like, it's not sized properly, if you know what I mean. But I wear them, by God. You're like, I paid. I need to put on about 75 more pounds before these truckers are going to be like set in, st in place. So, And that's not going to happen. I need to lose weight. If I have any sort of a resolution, and I don't do New Year's resolutions, but if there's any sort of New Year's resolution, it's to actually start using that fucking gym membership that I've got. <laughs> but yeah. So thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Now, granted, it's that like really wicking material. So, like, if I ever get wet, it dries real quick. You know. Wow. But not that my That's underwear. That's worse than wet, Victoria's you know, Secret. So oh no! I mean, and, pff, I mean, yeah, I know. I was walking in the mall the other day, and they had a sale. It was like seven pair for thirty-five bucks. I was like, damn, that's pretty like, good. Man, I got robbed. Did granted, you? Granted, 
they're like that big, you know. I mean, you don't get a lot of coverage. That was an awkward moment I had over Thanksgiving. We were watching the Macy's oh Day Parade, and there's a teeny bopper TikTok girl that be, I'm, I don't even really I don't know her name. I I pick her out of a lineup, but I couldn't. Tell, no, so she <laughs> but she wrote it. She got popular because of a song she wrote that's called I think it's called Victoria's Secret. I know Victoria's Secret. I don't know the song. It's a man that lives in Ohio making money off of girls like me. Well, that's true. Okay, Have you ever so watched that documentary? That's her song. No. There's Wait. a documentary series about on, Victoria's Secret. I feel like it was on Hulu. I feel like it was on Hulu. And uh, yeah, it's fucked up. Maybe she wrote the song because of yeah. that. Anyway. But yeah, it's all so about this dude. And like, watching, yeah. watching the Victoria's parade. Victoria's fake. There is no Victoria. There's no Victoria. No. Well, we're watching the parade with my in-laws, and this gal comes on, and she didn't sing this song, but they were like, who is that girl? And I was like, oh, she wrote a song about Victoria's Secret, and I start singing it, and I realize how sort of ridiculous it is, <laughs> just like I did now. And my in-laws are looking at me like, okay. It's true. You're all right. I mean, you know. So... Anyways, my go back going back to the original point, I had taken a picture of the tag on my kids' underwear because you got to know size. I got to know size, I understand. and so I took this picture, and then I was showing somebody at work something the other day, and on my phone, and, and then I swiped, swiped too far, that. and now here's a picture. I mean, he's not in the underwear. I didn't take a picture. Well, of God, me. I would hope not. I no. mean, it's like you pull your son over, and you're like, "Hey, hang on a second. You pull the like band yeah, down. No. Like, but yeah, still, you know, it's like weird. Like I'm showing it him is. like pictures of my dog or something. And then I swipe and I'm like, oh, and there's my That's kid's just... underwear. <laughs> but was it obviously underwear or is it just like a clothing tag? Uh, No, it's got the band on it. So it looks, it, so I think any reasonable person's going to okay. assume it's underwear. But well, like, you know, no. it's a faded tag and, you know. I have a note in my phone oh. where I, ha- I write Max's clothing mm. sizes i don't take pictures of the tags i just uh i just jot it down that and would then, have probably been a I, better and, and in all me. fairness what i do is when i buy i tend to buy big anyway because yeah you, know, you want it to last I, I want more it than to a last month. longer yes. you know so um like i bought him a a sweatshirt when i was down in florida and uh uh i thought i was buying a i knew it was a large I thought I was buying a kid's large. <laughs> Apparently, I bought an adult large. <laughs> so my seven-year-old is swimming in this thing. Mm. But that means that that NASA hoodie is going to last not just this season, but next year as well. At if not least. even possibly one more season. At least. Which would be sweet. Yeah. I would like that. I would really get my use out of that NASA I hoodie. bet you paid less for that than you paid for your $30 drawer. <laughs> No, but it was very, very close. It wasn't too much more. Let's put it that way. Wow. I could not have gotten two pairs of drawers for what I paid for that hoodie. Let's put it that way. Wow. Yeah. No. I The second you said Duluth, I knew that was going to be a pretty penny. But I figured for the price, it would be three pair. Yeah, no. Not one. Nope. Ah, I felt robbed. My favorite pants I that robbed. I wear are Duluth and I'd never heard of them until like within the last year a friend of mine had on these awesome like cargo pants they had seven the pants have seven pockets I think yeah. and if you know anything about women's clothing we they usually don't have, have any pockets negative pockets yeah. like we don't even have zero we have negative two <laughs> pockets like you can't even put your cell phone like in your you know waistband waistband um so anyways i asked her i was like hey weird question i like those pants you wear so i headed on over to st louis went to the and they were i got them on sale but i think originally they're like 70 dollar pants and i would never spend that on pants but they were on sale i bought a pair of them i love them oh no i like this pair of underwear i would totally i mean granted I would have to determine what my proper size is so that I can so get the if actual you, size. So if you had gotten the proper size, knowing how they're supposed to work, like what would what would have been a reasonable price you would have been okay paying for a single for pair? a single pair? <sighs> I'd pay 20 But also... I'd pay 20 You can take them back. Not and after I know, I've put them on. I, you might want to check into that because when I... I well, mean, at I this know point, I... I'm a little committed. 
They've gone into the rotation. Okay. I'm not wearing them at this time. <laughs> the rotation. I'm not wearing them at this time, but like I have worn them enough that at this point they are not going back. So when I bought my pants, when I was checking out, the gentleman asked me and I said, you know, this is my first time buying anything. He's like, oh, well, you might not know of our return policy. There's like a year I could take these pants back if I... You know, got six months into it. And, and I might do that with one pair because the one pair is a that sucks. snap. It's yeah. a snap. And I, I'm like, I'm a 40-something-year-old gal. I don't, I shouldn't have bought snap because it unsnaps all the time. That sucks to know because I bought a pair of pants at the same time. And I thought they were going to be kind of like this, like really comfy, like just, you know, kind of whatever, knocking around doing nothing kind of pants. Yeah. And uh, they suck. I Take was, them back. You have a whole year. Yeah. You don't need a receipt or it, anything. It's been longer than a year. Oh, shoot. Well, it's yeah, they have an amazing return year. policy. Yeah. I even told the guy, I said, so if I wear these like three or four times and decide that he's like, oh, yeah, bring them back. You have a whole year. You don't need a receipt. I'm like, wow. But, you know, when you pay. If you don't need a receipt. How do they know? Because they're Duluth. They know you bought them from them. But my point is, how do they know if it's been a year? Like, could I bring these oh, pants uh-huh. back and just be like, my buddy, I don't like them anymore. Well, they took you my know? email address, so maybe they, maybe oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, in the database. I might be in the database. They might be like, sir, you bought this uh, two years ago. So. Well, check the return policy. I remember it being. I distinctly remember when I bought it, too. A very generous return policy. It was, I was, I had time to kill prior to what ended up being a very bad one and done date. And, uh, yeah, um. That was the date that I had with the gal who texting went great. In person was horrific. Oh. Um, she wanted to meet at the Texas Roadhouse at 3.30 right when they opened. Oh, my God. That's avoid, my kind of person. To avoid the crowd. <laughs> we were the youngest ones in the restaurant by like 20-something fucking years. And you need to send me her number. I'll date her. She told me <laughs> that like she worked at a hospital, so I'm assuming doctor, nurse, something like that. No. Security guard. So, like, she could have beat the shit out of me. And she obviously put on, like, the bulk, like, after she took the pictures that was on her profile. Oh. So, like, she gets there, and I'm like, holy shit. You know? And then on top of it, she couldn't hold a conversation to save uh. her life. And so we're sitting there in silence at Texas Roadhouse uh. at 3.30 in the afternoon. And all I'm thinking is, I paid $30 for underwear. <laughs> you know? And uh, anyway... Um, yeah, it was, it was wow. awkward. Um, but anyway, so yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. You have the title of this episode. What? $30 underwear. $30 underwear. Asking to draw on. $30 all the... underwear with pinky. Yeah. Let's, okay. <laughs> I take it back. Let's not put that in the title. Whatever. That'll get a lot of hits. That'll get a lot of hits. Oh, man. Um, anyway. All right. Well, I touched on the socials when I talked about the, uh, Pulpit Parishioners group on Facebook, but we're on Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. Um, once again, go on Facebook, sign up for the Pulpit Parishioners group. Um, it's fun, and you can vote on the top cigars of 2023 f- per the parishioners. I have nothing to do with that. You guys nominate it, you guys vote on it, I just announce what it is. Power to the people. Power to the people. And um, we're on Twitter slash X, which... Um, I probably need to look into that more because I do think that you your know, options are becoming limited these days. Yeah, it could be rough. Um, I'm on YouTube for now. I haven't been hit with anything. Knock on wood. Um, but uh, we'll see. And then, um, oh yeah, ask the boys. I'm. I. <laughs> I've got to get. Um, uh, you got to figure that out. I, I do. I do. But for right now, if you want to call, it's area code eight six three eight seven four. Zero 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 zero. I think I don't know. I need to look into the dong. The dongle works with other programs. It just that one. It's weird. So I don't fucking know what's going on with that program. That one. That one sucks. But anyway, so I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Maybe maybe I'll 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 reset. Ask the boys in the beginning of the year. Maybe that'll be that's the a thing. good goal. We'll, we'll go into twenty twenty four with a new Ask the Boys. And we'll go from there. Actually, we'll rebrand it as the pulpit because there you know, go. there's only one boy now. And so, and, and if you and ever we've do talked it, about it before, I'm telling you, like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not assuming people have questions that I'm willing to answer, but I'm willing to listen to any questions exactly. and decide. 
So yeah, so should we... Sorry, I'm taking a puff. Should be asked the pulpit. Yeah. It should not be asked the boys, so we'll shift it. Anyway, um, so that's that. And then you still haven't done anything on your Instagram in a long time. No, I mean, if I'm being real honest, I just dislike social media. I get so it. I'm I get not... it. I'm not the biggest fan, but I got to do what I got to do. I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm lucky that I live a life where I don't have to do it's that. True. And okay. back when I did, I realized I liked people in real life. I did not like them online. <laughs> So I thought if I'm going to keep having to interact with people in real life, I cannot have yeah. an online presence. It's I don't mind interacting with some people online. Other people, it's just like... Ah, I even told I you a couple times over the months, you've emailed me like screenshots and stuff yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, you told me not and to do And this that. last time I was like, Nick, you got to stop this. Like, because... It gets me worked up, whatever somebody's saying. I feel like it's stuff that you should know, but yes, I understand. But I don't, if I, I wanted to know, I would at. be on social media. Well, I understand what you're getting at. But you're like, text me this and be like, ah, oh, look at this shit. Look what so-and-so said. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> want, like I got off of Facebook so I don't see that. Yeah. And That's fair. if I'm not getting the benefit of seeing all the like sort of fun stuff I could see, birth announcements, marriages, divorces, like if I don't get the fun stuff. I don't see any of that I shit. I certainly don't want the screenshots I've got of... my, I will say, I've got my Facebook kind of curated to the point where now it's mostly just posts from various groups that I belong to. So when I go to my Facebook, I very rarely see stuff from friends. Good. Um, which is kind of <laughs> fucked up. You know, it's like these are people that you're supposed to want to follow and like, you know follow their life and thing, but nobody posts about their life anymore they're sharing articles and things mm -hmm. of that nature which i don't give two shits about so um it's mostly just groups so when i go to my facebook i see comic books and i see cigars that's nice so i can live with that yep getting a lot of weird ads though lately I I, think if I... i'm getting a lot of weird yeah. ads <laughs> that i'm not gonna get into on the <laughs> okay. air but Getting some weird advertising. We'll talk about that when you push the stop recording yeah, button. So, <laughs> anyway, final thoughts on the Ferio Tego Timeless Black. I'm down to not too terribly much of it left, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. This has been a great cigar. Same. Uh, very solid. Uh, I'm down to the final third, and as I thought, it's kicked up a little bit on the... Did you get that? A little you bit. You got a little more... A little, little bit on the smoking spirit. I, I feel like it's gotten slightly heavier yeah a little bit more to the body still not not like a heavy cigar mm -hmm. but it's definitely more in the solid medium category i think er earlier in the cigar you could have convinced me that it was maybe a light medium now i would say there's a definite medium yep. bodied cigar yep on the pinky scale i would definitely smoke this again tomorrow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a good mm. stick <coughs> A little bit more to the retro hail. Still not, you know. I've I've retro hailed twice already. Look at you. I don't know if you've noticed that. And you haven't like hacked up a lung no. or like flipped and I, out. But I'm or scared anything. now that we're now that I'm in the final third and I can taste well, it's give like, it. Give it a I'd, give it yeah. one. Come on, come on. You gotta you gotta finish it out. You know. That was fine. It's not bad. That was fine. Yeah. It's solid. Super good cigar. I didn't die. So thank you, Seth, for sending those. Thank you. We really do appreciate it. And um, otherwise, I guess uh, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. It's your girl, Pinky. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. We need to figure out a ventilation system in here. It's probably not too bad if you're sitting here by yourself just having one cigar. No, it's not. So, yeah. No. If so I open this one, we'd get a crosswind. So, it's just me. It'd be better. It's just me. The curmudgeon. Yeah, you just add. <laughs> I'm adding that second smoke to the room, and it's just like, uh, now it's getting thick and oppressive in here. That's fine. Okay. We're fine. Okay. Later, guys.